How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am an avid herpetologist. Today we are once again continuing with our Master Duel Masochist run. We've got some really exciting updates to the deck thanks to the pack that we opened at the end of last episode. We've got some really cool utility cards and the deck is actually finally starting to get some reasonable creatures behind it. So at the end of the last episode we opened a Master Pack. Uh, and some legacy packs. We got Reptilian Naga. It's actually a fantastic wall for early game that also he helps to reduce one of our opponent's monsters' attack points to zero. We do have to be careful with leaving this in play since it does force itself into attack mode with zero attack, which is not great, but even then it will still reduce things attack points to zero once they run into it, so it's pretty nice if we need to help with closing the game out. We also picked up Lancephorhynchus, which is actually a pretty decent card. We finally have another dinosaur that we can use with our Survival of the Fittest Trap card, not just our Dirac Monoloth, who, don't get me wrong, I would really like to be playing more, but it seems like every time we get that combo, something goes wrong, and the combo just doesn't seem to work out, but now we do have a single tribute monster that's basically the equivalent of a summon skull, so we're definitely happy to see that. Being able to reach 2,500 attack points, even 35 with our Survival, is definitely really nice to have. And it is actually a normal monster, even though it's a pendulum, so it will actually benefit from our Secrets of the Gallant. I've decided to add Secrets back in. We have a total of five normal monsters that we're going to attempt to be able to get some damage in with that can then rip two cards out of our opponent's hand, which is pretty awesome. I'm also going to be adding back in Arcfiend Emperor. I've been using this as a no tribute card just to summon it for 1500 attack, but I keep forgetting that this is still at the very least a 3000 attack point beater if we do double tribute for it, so it does have some merit. I'm going to give it a try again. It'll lock us into only special summoning fiends, but I'm not too worried about that. We also picked up some more machines, so hopefully our iron call will be able to put in a little bit of work today. We've got a couple of other things we haven't had, really had the chance to try out yet, but this deck is finally starting to get a couple of pieces that actually make it somewhat playable. We still are a long way from an actually playable deck that can really help, you know, contend with some of the big meta decks, but you know what? At least we are getting some cards that give us some options here. So with that, let's go ahead and get into our first game of the day. Let's see if we can get some more master packs and upgrade this deck a little bit further. It's not great. We do have half or nothing and we have our new Blackwing tuner. So we at least have potential to be making some plays here. The very least, we can try to go into our level 8 synchro on the next turn. Okay. Um. That's not great. Following it up with a draw 4 is definitely not worth it. This isn't a great opening hand. We don't really have any follow up at all, which really stinks. But we don't really know what our opponent's doing yet. Let's just throw a 1500 defender and see what we have going on. That's not good. We still don't really have many outs to back row like at all outside of strictly broken line. So if they can actually set up the eternal soul, I really don't think there's any way we can actually out what they what they're doing, but we'll see. We'll see how the game goes. Speaking of which, Okay. Well, they're now guaranteed the Eternal Soul next turn, which kind of stinks. That's still not great. It's a little bit of extra defense being able to go into our Synchro, but our Synchro still isn't enough to wall up a, a Dark Magician. I guess we can just try to set up behind our Heartland Draco. We'll get some damage in here. If we do have our field spell, we can at least get our Heartland Draco with protection. Toss up a field spell and send it back. He's still 1500 away from the double direct attack threshold, so... Really gonna depend on what else he gets. What is that? In Dark Magician. That is interesting. Well, it doesn't stop us. Straight to end phase. Alright. Iron Call. I think what we do is we just attack directly this turn. We'll set our Karakori and just try to out it next turn and see if we can get in without having to attack directly through Heartland. 
maybe get to put him on a two-turn clock, but we also don't know what his other back row is. I'm assuming one of those Eternal Soul. In we go. Alright, connect for the 2000. Uh, I kind of don't want them targeting the field spells. Let's just set this and hope they go for that instead. Oh, no! Oh, we forgot to set our car, Cory. Oh, that was bad. Starting off with misplays already, this episode is not going well. <laughs> it may not matter, depending on what else he has. Magician's Rod. Yeah, this is where he's going to grab the circle and it's just going to kill us. Secrets of Dark Magic is definitely not what I was have, would have expected him to grab there, but, I mean, we're still in it. Straight to end phase. We can actually cheese some free damage here by swinging into the rod. Without having to burn our Heartland Draco's effect. If he has the... Oh, oh, he doesn't... Okay, so he doesn't have the Illusion Magician. Now we'll go ahead and set our Karakori. See what happens. Incredibly, we are still in this. Alright, if he doesn't commit another monster and doesn't actually have a back row to respond with, we can win on the next turn. Even if he does commit on the next turn... Okay, he's going to go ahead and go for it, which is fine. Uh, this is a 1300 normal summon, so we can still get over him... But I forgot that this car, Cory, the turn is flipped face up, can actually attack directly. So if he didn't swing into it, we could have flipped it, and we still would have been able to swing for the 32 lethal. Alright. Will this be enough to get through for lethal damage? That's the question. Alright, so we'll normal summon our, our Auster. Just in case there's something devious like Gores. I don't think there's any downside. Oh, other monsters cannot attack. Okay, yep, there is a downside. Let's not do that. Let's just go ahead and get in and hope it's enough. Is there a response? Oh! Oh! Is this it? Come on. Yes! Mm. Fantastic! Already got a win. Alright, I don't know what the story was there. Maybe his other back row was just a, a, a bluff. I guess he didn't have the Dark Magician. I don't know. He was making some unusual plays, but you know what? We'll take it. We are officially in silver, and that means we get another Master Pack, and we're going to need it, so let's go ahead and see what we get. Looks like a good one. Come on, playable cards. Honestly, more than anything, I just really need Beat Sticks. Like We've got some pretty good defensive power, but we need offense. That's what we're hoping for here. That's not offense. That is the exact opposite of offense. We don't want that. Marine Cess Cascade. Ursarctic Slider. Aroma Garden, come on, just give me something playable. Salomon Great Fennec, I mean it's 1600, but it's not great. Fabled, Fabled Dianar, Diana, Dianaira. In first opponent's normal spell card effect result becomes your opponent discards a card. I mean, that's not great. <laughs> if we're tributing two monsters, I'd rather them not also get the discard cards from our hand. It plays spells, which is interesting, but I don't think that's good enough for what we're currently sitting on. Sex Conversion. Man, come on. Just one good card. Oh. I don't... I'm never going to control a Roid Fusion monster. We're not being... We're never going to play that. Alright, well, at the very least, we do still have three Legacy Packs to open. Let's hope we can get just something playable out of those. Come on, something playable. Okay. A level 2 synchro? It's a wall, but how do we even make that? Like, strictly with our lady? No, our lady can't even make winged beasts. It has to make warriors, so we just can't make that at all. And the Path of Destiny. Oh, neither of those cards are worth it. Alright. Come on, you got two more. Ice Mirror. Nope, that is not playable. Neither is that. Oh, come on. Just one card we can add to the deck. 
Trap Master. That's interesting, actually. So, we were just... I just talked about how we didn't have an answer for Eternal Soul. Trap Master is an answer for it. So, we might actually have to find a spot for Trap Master, as crazy as that is. It's kind of like the field spell, the Temple of the Mind's Eye. I, see, I, I get the relation, you know, Rod of Mind's Eye, but... On an equip spell, I don't think that's nearly as good. We can't, like, blank our opponents quite as well. No, I don't think that's playable. I think Trap Master is really the only takeaway. Let me see if I can find a spot for him, and we'll go ahead and get into the next game. So apparently my recording decided to stop during my last game, so unfortunately I don't have the footage. But we do, in fact, have another win under our belt, and we did get to upgrade our deck with at least a couple of cards. We actually were able to pull Dark Blade from our Legacy Pack, Lesser Dragon, just as like a generic wind monster that's summonable off of our flying Kamakiri. So we did actually get to make some small upgrades, but it is what it is. I mean, it wasn't a super exciting game anyways. But yeah, we got at least a couple of decent upgrades. We also managed to get our hands on Landrobe, which is a weird Book of Moon effect from our hand. So kind of decent there. Um, we can actually Book of Moon and then tribute this off immediately for one of our tributable monsters, which isn't bad. We are not able to summon from our extra deck the turn that we do this, but it's still utility, and utility is good. We got utility, we got a little bit of brute force. Let's get into our next game and see what happens. Speaking of usable, this hand is not the worst, not the best. Let's just set our monster here, try to keep some of our utility back. We have our Fairy Tale Snow, we got a Book of Moon. We have another form of Book of Moon in the form of Landrobe, so we'll see. We'll see what we can do. We can set a monster they control and then potentially get in with Dark Blade as long as they're not on a real deck. And it looks like they're not. Uh oh. Alright, Manju, what are they getting with that? Oh crap. Oh crap. Alright, well, nothing we have currently is going to get us over Blue Eyes. Unless they just end their turn. I mean, unfortunately, we still don't really have a solid out to this. We can make Alverditch or Heartland, but neither of those cards are helpful. I don't have a continuous spell for Heartland. I don't have a tuner to make our level 8. Nothing here is really going to be good enough, so I think we unfortunately just have to set another card and pass and hope we can get something better. The fact that he has the Blue Eyes Chaos Max is very bad. Like, if he is able to summon that, the game is just over. We do not have an out for that card. Full stop. Yep, that's it. And we'll go ahead and leave. Yep. Still don't have a clean way to deal with blue eyes unless we get a select few cards, unfortunately. Okay, I don't. this is not terrible. So, again, depending on what they're on, there's no extra deck. Unless they're on, like, full monarchs. Uh-oh. They don't have an extra deck. What are they on? Did they forget to add an extra deck, maybe? Unusual. Okay. Alright. Okay, so they've got a 2600, but we can still get over that, thanks to our land rope combo here. Alright, let's see if this does... Let's, let's see if we can make this work. Land rope. Let's get this guy set face down. He's got back row. Come on, don't have anything. Alright. We're going for it. Let's try to get in for some damage. Not damage, let's try to see if we can get in and remove the monster. What is this? And here we go. Okay, should have flipped that earlier. That is fine. We can now set our broken line to halt the other card. Alright, this isn't a terrible position to be in. We've got a decently sized monster. He doesn't have an extra deck. Hmm. Okay, so... Hmm... 
Oh, I really wish that card was already set. So if I declare an attack, he can potentially trigger it. Let's just set a monster for now. What we can do is wait him out, and on the next turn, assuming that he can't send something to trigger the sage before then, another water slide? I'm really glad I didn't attack. You will be. You will be. All right. Well, unfortunate. I mean, we'll chain it in response, I guess. I'm a little confused, but I mean, I'll take it, I guess. These things just mill cards, right? Is there any reason not to just go ahead and throw down the Arcfiend Emperor? Let's just get him for some damage. Okay, well, <laughs> that's fine. Get him for some more damage. He used to do it every time. This is annoying. This doesn't even seem good. It's just annoying to resolve this over and over again. Alright, well, we got one. That kind of stinks. We're going to be down to just our one monster now. Not great. Although, to be fair, that would have lost all of them if I had actually tributed for this card, so at least we got some damage in. He's doing this instead of conducting his draw phase, right? So, like... Oh, otherwise add it to your hand. Okay. Altergeists now? Send the rest of the graveyard. Okay. Sure. I'm still very confused what the end game is here. Like he doesn't have an extra deck. Like what is his what is his goal? Is it just trying to control my board? All right, can at least get in for a little bit of damage here. Get in for some damage, and then we'll just make our uh, level five. Here we go again. This is honestly just really obnoxious, just triggering this effect over and over again. What are we moving towards? I'm so very confused. He's just kind of doing stuff. Okay, sure. All right, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure he just put the, the card on top that's gonna pop my board, so. If we make the level 5, we just lose everything. I don't think it's really worth it. But yeah, we'll just go ahead and ship it. Like, I don't know what to play around. Like, what is this guy doing? Please tell me this is not like a 40 minute just deck out the opponent deck. He still doesn't have anything. What? What is happening? I'm so confused. 
sure. We'll get in for a little bit more damage, I guess. He's not drawing anything, so like there's no reason not to. Oh, okay. Well, we can at least get another summonable monster back. Didn't even honestly realize it had that effect. How often do you normal summon Duke Shade? Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Oh my gosh, this is miserable. Are you kidding me? Is he just going to put the removal card back again? No, he put the Sage Koya. He's literally just stalling. Like, this is really annoying. What a slog. Well, we can at least threaten some good damage with Heliotrope. Gonna get a bunch of triggers, but you know what? We need to get some damage in. I can't Three attacks, I have to sit through him resolving six of these effects. This is absolutely miserable. Oh, for crying out loud. This is miserable. I'm probably going to cut a bunch of this out during editing, but you can see we're currently on turn 13 of just stalling. He has done nothing to progress the state of the game. He is just making this take forever. Alright. Well, if I go ahead and tribute summon the Arc Fiend Emperor, we can try for lethal. Here it goes. Connect. Five more cards go to the bottom of his deck. Alright, 
We are one attack away from getting out of this slog. But wait! There's more! He has to stage off three attacks in order for this to not kill him. Let's try it! Thank goodness. Oh, thank goodness. Get me out of this game. Get me out of this game. Oh my gosh. In the entire Masochist run, I don't think I have been that miserable yet. What in the world was the point of that deck? That was awful. But we are rewarded for our patience. We have managed to get another Master Pack. We can head back to the shop and we got three more Legacy Packs to go with it. Oh my goodness. Come on, give me something good. Scrap Iron Statue? Ooh! Well, that would have been nice last game. Okay. We actually have a Junk Monster to go with that, too. That is actually kind of cool. We can use that. Genex Spare. It's a tuner. Heavenly Gate of the Minkanko. That is probably going to be a negative. Nope. Rose Tentacles. It's a tributable monster. That's not going to do it. It's good with Black Garden, but that's about it. Oh, oh, didn't mean to... Do oh, Tin Goldfish! Yes! Oh, that's so good for us. Tin Goldfish is fantastic. We also got another tuner. Target a Dragon Normal Monster. Equip this card to target with Text Transition Piercing. Okay, not really relevant, but Tin Goldfish is fantastic. Not only is this a 2,000 defender, it's a free special summon, and it's a machine that goes with our Iron Call. That is so good for us right now. We also have Go Go the Gallant Ninja. With battle damage, your opponent must discard two random cards. Okay, also not terrible. It's a wind monster you can summon off of Kamakiri. Don't hate that either. Dragoroar. Not great. <laughs> That's okay, though. We actually got some decent cards out of that. Alrighty. We still have some Master Packs to open. Let's go ahead and get into those. Got right out of our stupor from that last game. That is awesome. Super excited to add these cards. Let's see what else we get. Synchro Deflector. I can destroy one monster your opponent controls. I mean... We have, like, our generic level 5 and stuff that we can make, but it's not fantastic. That's pretty good. That's awesome. A normal summonable monster that can go up to 1200 attack, or 2200 attack. That's fantastic. That is the kind of card that we need right now. More things like that, please. Oh, okay. Looks like we might have something rare here. Kawaki Mairu Power Hand. Reveals a normal trap in your hand to keep it in play. It's a 2100 normal summon. Huh. That's kind of cool. Again, it's a level 4 machine, it's an Earth. That, I think we have to play. That's a pretty solid card. We've got a decent number of normal traps that we can play. And Armed Protector Dragon. That is not great. <laughs> that's okay, though. I'll take the power, or the power hand. That's, that's pretty good. We're finally getting some offensive power here. Ryukushin Powered! That can replace some of our normal monsters, too. Love to see that. Revival of the Immortals. We are not playing Earthbound Immortals, but that's okay. All right, we have actually got a couple of decent upgrades here. Let's go ahead and add those in and get into our next game. All right, this is actually exciting, guys. We're actually getting some decently playable cards in our deck, finally. All right, I'm really excited to see if we can actually do stuff with these new support cards. All right, let's take first. Honestly, one of the other things I'm kind of starting to hope for are some other f um, spell cards that we can have face up 
that are actually relevant so we can make better use of our Heartland Draco. Because the one we have are still basically duds. This is interesting. So, setting Yuki Ona isn't a bad move. We also have a 2100 beat stick we can just put out there, and we do have a trap to reveal for it. We also have our Mr. Volcano we contribute for. Let's set this and just kind of see what they're on. What is this? Is this an Ice Barrier deck? Ice Barrier Tuner. Yeah. Ramped right up into that. Uh oh. I think I know what's coming. That's not good. Are we about to get Trishalud on the Masochist series? No, he went for something else. White or a dolphin? Alright, I guess. You can think of a hundred better things you could have done with that turn. So that keeps him off of going into a higher level tuner, or a higher level synchro, which is good. Ice bear, supposed to be from your deck that many four lowers. Okay. All right. Well, our power hand is going to be able to put in some good work here. I do like that. Let's go ahead and do the power hand. We currently don't have a way to get over the dolphin if he resummons it, so we have to be careful about that. But that's not bad for a turn. Go ahead and reveal our trap. Keep our Kawaku Mairu power hand in play. How are we going to get through this dolphin? The problem is I believe the dolphin can resummon itself. I've played this in Godi in actual decks before. Yeah, so it can resummon itself and treat itself as a tuner anytime it's destroyed by battle. Which is definitely rough. I'm not sure how we get through that. Good news is he's only got two cards in hand and he can't do anything with that right now. Alright, well that's going to give him something back. Sure. Okay, so he can actually make plays out of the graveyard. I've, I'm not super familiar with the Ice Barrier support. He's definitely going for something here. He's got enough to make a level 8 now. By exactly two. Okay. Is he gonna go for a white or a whale? What in the world is this? Sure, dude. Flex Regeki. Like, go for it, I guess. That's gonna be kind of tricky to get over. We have cards that do it, but. Yeah, I'm calling this. There's too many things to get over now. Okay, Tin Goldfish. I don't necessarily want to lead the Tin Goldfish here, though. We don't have anything to make... Because we, 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 like, we can make the Draco, but we don't have the spell. So why don't we just go ahead and set our 18 Defender, set our Trap, and send it back. The more of these special summon mechanics we get, though, we are getting closer to actually being able to summon the Boral Sword Dragon that we opened the series with. Have not had the opportunity yet, and if this is a full blue eyes deck, we are probably not getting the opportunity today either. Just going straight for the fusion? Sure, why not? Yeah, we unfortunately still don't have very many cards that actually out face up bodies. We have a few now, thanks to our Ballista Trap and our Karakori, but not too many options. He's going all in, he's going for the ultimate dragon. Oh, he's just going for the OTK. Yep. And we're not playing a deck that can punish him. Yep. Let's go ahead and call it. 
I think we just set the Auster and just kind of see what they're up to. We might actually get to use our Scrap Iron Statue. He's got the rod, of course. We have an out to that, though. And we have our Kawaki Mairu Power Hand. Interesting. Did not go for the um, Dark Magic Circle. Must already have it. Are they just not playing the Dark Magic Circles? We've run into a couple of Dark Magician decks now, and none of them have played the Circle. Alright, going straight for Dark Magician. Sure. Sure, sure. We are going to have to find a way to actually get around the Dark Magician. We can get through some smaller cards thanks to our Power Hand, but we do not have a current out to Dark Magician. Although, if he does activate the Eternal Soul and goes to activate it, and we pop it, it actually wipes his board. So that is something. We're definitely not out of this. I have a feeling Scrap Iron Statue is definitely going to be our saving grace, especially in the Dark Magician matchup. Okay. You got it, dude. Yep, this is going to be quite a bit of damage. <clears throat> Submarine Roid. Not a great card, but... Let's just go ahead and get through the, the Magician's Rod if we can. We unfortunately do not have a trap to reveal for this, but... Do what we gotta do. I don't want to leave him with a monster on the board. And I'd rather not waste the snow yet. Yep. We'll just go ahead and pass. We do lose the Power Hand, unfortunately. Alright, now we're basically hoping that he does actually activate the Eternal Soul, because we are actually in trouble if he does not. Yeah, running the Power Hand out was probably not the right call there. He doesn't even need to use the Eternal Soul. He's got everything he needs just from his hand. Come on, activate Eternal Soul. Okay. Come on, activate it. Oh, I can't even respond to it because he didn't flip it. That's so frustrating. Yep. Yep. So because he chose not to activate the Eternal Soul until this turn, he gets to walk away. That's really tilting. We even had the out, and they just they played around it without even knowing we had it. No, nope, we're done. Like I said, literally every starter this man could possibly ask for. This is not a terrible hand. An 1800 defender to start on, and we do have a monster. And since we have our Ashen Veil, we can get, you know, 22 damage over something potentially. Not the worst. A normal trap. Okay, that's nice. We can afford to put our power power hand out just in case this is like a some kind of weird flip monster that we want to try to avoid dealing with the effect it's not and he's probably going to get a blue eyes off of this kaiser glider nothing we currently have is going to get us over that You're not serious. Are you kidding me? You're telling me I'm getting Rage with Eyes of Blue dropped on me right now. And they don't go anywhere. This card has literally no drawback once they've actually entered play. So since we have no board that we can actually respond to this with... I mean, we literally just lose. Like, we can't out one, much less three of these. I think the only way we get we get through this, the next two draws in order, 
have to be Reptilian Naga followed by Lanthopharynchus. That is literally the only combination of cards that will actually get us out of this. Unless they just disconnect, which maybe they will. It looks like they might. Alright, can we see our Reptilian Naga? Nope. That's it. Losing to Rage with Eyes of Blue. Well, we have a continuous spell for Heartland. Got a powerful Normal Summon. I think we probably just set the Auster and pass. And set our Ballista Squad 2 just to try to do something with it, but that doesn't leave us with a lot of follow-up play, unfortunately. Uh, let's set the Ballista Squad 2. I think we have to negate that. That is too scary of a card. Pretty good. Set a face down. So you not have follow up? This is really good for us if he doesn't have follow up. Hmm. Okay. Well, we can get in for some good damage this turn. We'll end on Heartland Draco. Um, I think we'll hold that back. Yeah, well, let's, let's just go ahead and push the power of hand forward. Get as much damage in as we can. Especially since we don't have a normal trap to reveal for it. Alright, we are 600 damage from the 4,000 threshold for Heartland Draco to be able to just end on its own. Which is a little concerning. We do have our Ballista Squad to help protect us here. I would obviously rather not, like throw my Drago away if I can avoid that, but at least if they have an answer for it, we can take something else down too. Harlan Draco, man, this card has been my signature card this run. Put in some good work. Straight to the pass. So if he has a response, like I said, at least we still have Ballista Squad. Elfie Hide and Seek. Another random continuous spell here. How funny would it be if the Poisonous Winds was keeping him off right now? Let's go ahead and get in. If he takes this, then we'll summon something next turn and hope we can go for lethal. But I'd rather not commit anything just on the off chance he has responses like Torrential. Junk Warrior. Didn't even have anything to summon with it. So this now hits for 700 over that. <clears throat> I think we stay protected. We don't summon anything. Okay. And we're just going to go ahead and... Go for lethal on the following turn, because as long as he doesn't have an out for this, once this deals damage this turn, if this deals damage, okay. Now he's below 2,000, we can directly attack next turn. I don't see any reason to commit anything else. Let's just go ahead and pass it. I'm really curious about what this is. What would he have wanted to hit off of his Foolish Burial Goods? I'm going to have to look at this deck afterwards, because I'm really curious. What is this? Is this another masochist? I'm going to summon add an evil eye card. Sure. We might be against another masochist. Still can't swing into the Draco. And we can still swing for lethal on the next turn by activating the effect. Assuming he doesn't have anything to mess that plan up. Any kind of like effect negation would definitely be bad for us. Because since I haven't activated it, he could have something like... Dark Blade, okay. Yeah, he still could have something here. I'm gonna set this just on the off chance that there's something to be concerned about. Like Fiendish Chain or something, I don't know. I feel like he would have done that if he had it already, though. Alright, no response to that. This should be lethal. 
Come on. Thank goodness. All right, we managed to take it down. Nice job. I think that's actually our first win with the Heartland Draco effect too. Gotta love it. All right, I gotta, I gotta see this guy's deck and see what he was on. Uh, this is like, I don't know what this is. This is not a masochist deck. There's absolutely no chance this is a masochist deck. Just about every card in their extra deck is an ultra or above. There's no shot. What in the world is this deck? You know what's weird? I've actually run into quite a few of these on my main account too. These decks that are just piles of random cards, but they're so full of supers and ultras, there's no way it's a masochist deck. Not to mention the fact that they have this promo obelisk, which you wouldn't even be able to use if you were doing a true masochist run. I don't know what this is. All right, whatever. Well, we got another pack to open, so we'll leave this in the past and look forward to the future. What is this? Vol Tester. That is an unusual card. It's kind of funny, the flavor behind it, but that's very unusual. Gradle Slime. If we don't have any Gradles, not going to be playing that. Trickster Magical Laurel. We don't have any Trickstar cards. Subterra Nemesis Archer. So, this card has a good effect, but unless I'm wrong, you don't get any of it unless you already have other Subterra cards. So I don't think we can do anything with that. Red Ogre. That could potentially be playable. It's a two tribute monster, but it's got some good upside. We could potentially use that. Boomered Path, not Boomered Path, not great. Trick Star. Well, now we have a Trick Star monster. When it takes effect damage, you can special summon this card from your hand. Uh, not fantastic. Probably not going to be using that. And Cyber Egg Angel. Nope, that is not playable. And we didn't get any Legacy Packs, so that is it. I think the only card really here worth considering is the Red Ogre, so we'll see if we can find a spot for him. Alright, first game seeing the Reptilian Naga. Unfortunately, we don't really have anywhere to go with it. Um, let's just set the Lady, honestly. I'm going to go ahead and activate Poisonous Winds, just in case they're on a wind deck. And we've got some nice back row we can follow it with. Alright, well, if they're mate and their sleeves are anything to go off of, they may just wipe the floor with us here, but we'll see. Well, don't think we're beating this. Yeah, we're not beating this. That's a no. Okay, we don't really have anything defensively right now. I think we'll just set the ninja here. Yeah. Well, not a very strong start on our side. We'll see what the opponent's got going on. Unknown Synchron. Okay. You know, our Scrap Iron Statue does actually... It does actually deal with Pendulum cards. Praying Mantis. Masochist, perhaps? This is interesting. Well, at the very least, we can use our Dark Blade here. Go ahead and get in. Yeah, let's take care of the Mantis. I'm a little more worried about that. Okay. Still have our statue. Will 1800 beats be enough? Praying Mantis was an interesting card. I actually wouldn't mind pulling one of those myself. I'm in a baby mantis token. Okay. Hmm. It's walling up. And has a back row. Okay. Okay, so. 
I'm not too... Oh, okay, so we can actually clear the board here. This just got a little bit better. Let's just go ahead and start with that. Let's confirm that this is, in fact, a maskist and not a, an archetype or something I'm not aware of. Glad we got rid of that. Okay, let's go ahead and run out Kazuki. We can now follow this up. If we want, we can follow this with Heartland, but I actually am comfortable with just leaving these guys in play. We're leaving them on an empty board. We still have the biggest monsters on the block. I want to get more damage in before we go into Heartland, so let's, let's do that. If we can get him below to like a reasonable point, maybe next turn, but honestly, if he doesn't have any follow-up, he's only got three more cards in hand, we may just go ahead and just try to beat face in with the cards we have. Oh! There it is. All right, I'm going to assume this was probably a fellow masochist. Good game. Silver rank three. See, now this is a deck that definitely has more of a masochist feel to it. That is an interesting lineup. This is totally a masochist. It's got some cool cards in here. Dark Horus. It's got some good boss monsters. Got Torrential, some decent back row. Very cool. Best of luck to you in the future, sir. Let's go ahead and get into our pack. Pendulum Fusion. Blank Vampire Dragon. That's pretty good. A single tribute monster that also lets us tutor out cards like our Tin Goldfish. That's pretty solid. Happy to see that. Three-Eyed Ghost. That's a little less usable. Ninja Grandmaster Suzuki. Or is it Sasuke? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. 1800 attacker with upside. Honestly, one of the other things I'm kind of starting to hope for are some other f um, spell cards that we can have face up that are actually relevant so we can make better use of our Heartland Draco. Because the one we have are still basically duds. Happy to see that. Clockwork Knight. So here's the cool thing about this. This is literally... A 1,000 attack point swing for all of the monsters in play. This might be the single best continuous spell we could have asked for for our Heartland Draco. This card is stellar. Really, really happy with this. Orchestrated Return. That's going to be a no. Oh, got a super rare. Raid Raptor Phantom Knight's Claw. Dark Xyz Monster. We do not have any of those. And we just have another obscure beast tribute summon monster here. Beast type monster you control is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, remove and play two beasts. Uh, that's probably going to be a no. Not quite as good of an upside as the red ogre, but we've still got some pretty fantastic cards here. We'll go ahead and open our legacy pack before we call it, but we have got some really fun additions to our deck for next episode. I'm excited to keep going with this. Order to charge. One non-token normal monster. Tribute that. If you do destroy a monster, your opponent controls. It's removal, I guess. Not great removal, though. Ceremonial bell. We will skip that one. All right. So, all right. With that, thank you all again for joining me. I am may not see it when we're in the heat of the moment, but this has been a really fun series to work on. I'm really enjoying the opportunity to just play a different variation of Yu-Gi-Oh!, this deck is going really cool places. I'm so excited to keep trying and see what we can build out of these cards. So stay tuned for next episode. With that, I am an avid herpetologist. Thank you all so much for joining me, and I will see you all next time. <laughs>